Hello viewers, hope you're all doing good. Welcome to this uh, video. Um, okay, so I hope you're all learning Kubernetes from my channel. And um, in this video, I'm going to show you, uh, I'm going to talk about Rancher. Um, Rancher is a um, cloud orchestration and uh, uh, cluster management uh, tool. It's completely open source. Um, and in this video, I'm going to mm, show you how you can use Rancher to manage your Kubernetes cluster. So what Rancher does is um, it can it acts as a management interface. So you don't have to know anything about the kubectl commands, although I would recommend you to uh, get familiar with uh, the kubectl, the low level uh, fundamentals, right? And then um, uh, in the real world, in the uh, corporate um, scenario, nobody is going to use kubectl um, other than the uh, cluster uh, administrators, uh, the cluster admins. Um, it would be easy to have a web interface um, where you can uh, deploy the application, manage cluster everything without having to run from the uh, command line. But personally, I'm a big fan of command line, uh, but I just wanted to show you guys how you can use Rancher Web UI to manage cluster. Uh, the important thing here is um, you can use Rancher to manage multiple clusters. It's not just single cluster. Uh, in one of my previous video, I shown you how to install Kubernetes dashboard web UI uh, that is specific to a cluster. So you uh, start a new Kubernetes cluster, you install dashboard web UI onto the cluster and you can manage the cluster from the web UI. Um, unlike that, Rancher is going to manage multiple clusters. Say if you have got uh, many clusters in your organization, you can use Rancher to manage them. Um, if you have already got a Kubernetes cluster running on-premise or uh, in the cloud somewhere, you can manage them uh, using Rancher or you can use Rancher to provision cluster for you. So when you set up Rancher, it's going to give you some commands which you need to run on your existing cluster. So uh, in this video, I'm going to show you how to use an existing Kubernetes cluster and import them into Rancher and manage the cluster um, via Rancher. Um, Rancher supports uh, GKE, Google um, Compute Engine, G, uh, the cluster in the uh, uh, in Google Cloud, uh, Amazon uh, EKS, Amazon, yeah, EKS, and the Microsoft Azure. Um, you can provision the cluster in uh, in these three cloud providers, or you can use your own existing uh, Kubernetes cluster. Right. Um, what I'm going to do now is to bring up a clean cluster. Um, Okay, so CD to play git clone my Kubernetes repository CD to Kubernetes and then to Vagrant provisioning and do Vagrant up. So this is going to set up a clean cluster with three machines, uh, one master node and two worker nodes, all of them uh, running in CentOS 7 virtual machines. So I'm using Vagrant to provision it um, so once the cluster is up, we will proceed with setting up Rancher and uh, how we can import the uh, this Kubernetes cluster into Rancher. Um, I'm using my host machine is um, Arch Linux based uh, Manjaro distribution. I'm, I'm using GNOME desktop environment. So that's my host machine. And in my host machine, I'm using Vagrant to provision the three virtual machines for Kubernetes cluster. So everything is running in my local workstation here. So I'm going to install Rancher on my local workstation and I'm going to import the uh, Kubernetes cluster into Rancher. Um, Rancher, uh, okay, while, it's, uh, while the cluster is um, getting provisioned, I'll talk about Rancher. Um, um, I'll show you how to install and set up Rancher on uh, the Arch Linux um, kind of operating system. So if you happen to use uh, Arch Linux, you can follow this uh, video. By the way, you can also follow this on any Linux distribution. So Rancher setup is quite simple. Uh, the only requirement um, is you need to have Docker installed on your local machine. I've already installed Docker and um, uh, Rancher itself runs inside a, a Docker container. So they've got Docker container for Rancher. It's as easy as downloading Docker 
um, installing Docker and then running a um, Docker command to bring up the container. So that's it. And your rancher is set up. And once it's set up, you use the web UI to uh, import the cluster and manage the cluster. That's it. So if you are on Arch Linux or any other Linux distribution, you install Docker. So that's the first requirement. Um, what I did was sudo pacman-s docker. So I installed that. I already installed Docker. And the other thing I did was I added my user account to the Docker group. sudo g password minus a venkat n docker. So I've added uh, my user account venkat n to the uh, group docker. So you can see get end group docker. So I'm a member of the docker group. Why this is needed? If you don't do this, you won't be able to run docker commands um, as yourself. So you have to prefix sudo or you can you need to become root to be able to run uh, Docker commands. So make sure the Docker uh, service is running. sudo systemctl status docker. Docker is running. Uh, that's it. Docker info. Docker ps. I haven't got anything. It's a clean uh, Docker installation. Right. Um, I'm going to wait for these. Uh, um, virtual machines to get provisioned and once the cluster is up and running we can um, set up docker and um, continue from there. Um, I also wanted to show you if I bring up my um, web browser if you go to rancher.com uh, you'll have the setup instructions at the very bottom on their home page rancher.com if you scroll all the way to the bottom it says so that's the only thing you need to do. Uh, so we are running docker, docker run minus d to run in the background in daemon mode. Restart unless stopped. So if for some reason the docker um, container uh, crashes, it gets restarted automatically unless you stop it. So that's what it says. Minus minus restart equals unless stopped. So if you do docker stop on the container, it won't get started automatically. And you're listening on port 80 on the local host and forwarding that to the port 80 inside the container and same for 443 for um, HTTPS. And you're using the rancher's uh, latest uh, Docker container, Docker image. Okay, uh, and uh, if you also go to what is rancher overview, you get a, a good idea of uh, what it can do for you. Um, run Kubernetes anywhere and um, unified cluster management. So that's what it is. So you can have multiple uh, clusters. You can have a cluster in Google Cloud. You can have a cluster, uh, a local cluster in your um, environment on premise, or you can have it in uh, AWS or Microsoft Azure. And uh, it's just one-stop shop. You set up Rancher, you configure the uh, security policy, you configure the authentication, authorization, everything, and then the uh, uh, the users in your organization will be able to um, log into Rancher with just one um, security policy, which applies to all the clusters. So that's unified cluster management. We all know it's uh, the cluster is um, workload management. You submit workloads to to your cluster. Centralized policy management, so you can manage policies across multiple clusters. World-class support, it's completely open source, you can use it, but when it comes to support, if you want a 24 bar 7 um, support, uh, there's a price you need to pay. Okay, so as I mentioned, it's a unified cluster management you can use. Uh, they've got their own uh, Rancher Kubernetes engine. Uh, Amazon EKS, Google Container Engine, and the Microsoft Azure. Okay, so um, the status is it has completed uh, provisioning the K-Master. It has initialized the Kubernetes cluster, and it's doing the, the first worker node. And it's going to do the second worker node. I think it's going to take another four or five minutes. And I'm going to pause the video here and come back when it's ready. All right, Vagrant has provisioned all the three virtual machines. Um, I'm going to copy the uh, kubeconfig con cube uh, uh, file to my host machine so that I can run 
kubectl commands from my host machine uh, to interact with the uh, Kubernetes cluster. I don't have to log into kmaster uh, to run the kubectl commands. So for that, I'm going to uh, make a directory called .cube under my home directory and copy the uh, Kubernetes config file from kmaster to my uh, .cube directory. Okay, that's copied. Let's look at the status of the uh, service. kubectl cluster info. Cluster is up. kubectl get nodes. So I've got three nodes. All of them are ready. kubectl version, just to make sure what version I've got. Um, server version 1.13.1. One. Okay, so last time when I recorded it was 1.13.0. Okay, so we've got a clean cluster running. So now let's look at how to set up Rancher. Okay, and rancher.com. I'm just going to copy the uh, Docker command to start the container. It's this command. You don't need sudo because you've added your user account to the Docker group. Control C. I'm going to paste that here. Right. Um, one extra thing I'm going to do is to uh, mount a volume on my host machine and map that to the uh, uh, volume inside the container. Because uh, if you run the, uh, if you start the container um, with this command, it's not going to persist the data. So once you stop the container uh, and restart it, or if you delete the container and restart it, it's not going to uh, hold all the configurations. So to make the data persistent, I'm going to mount the volume um, uh, on my host machine so that every time you restart Docker, it gets the uh, data stored in your uh, host machine as well. ls slash opt. I've got Rancher from my previous video. I'm going to delete that. rm minus rf opt rancher okay that's clean i don't have rancher here and uh, in the docker command i'm gonna uh, bind a volume and the path on my local machine is opt rancher and i'm going to map that to var lib rancher inside the container so that's all you need Okay, that was quick because I've already downloaded the Rancher image and it was quick. Let's look at the docker ps command and we haven't given any name to the container so it got a, a random name, vigorous pascal. Okay, if I look at the logs, docker logs minus f, vigorous pascal. So it's um, starting the container and it's setting up, uh, it's going to take a minute or two. And once it's done, um, we should be able to go to the web browser and look at uh, port 80. Okay, let's see if it's up. Uh, back in the terminal, if I do netstat minus nltp, and if I prefix sudo, you can see port 80 is listening here. So I'm on my um, local machine and it's running on port 80. You can access this uh, from any machine in your network um, with the IP address of this uh, machine where Rancher is running or if you've got DNS in your uh, environment just make sure uh, you have an IP address uh, A record for your, um, uh, for your host machine that's running Rancher and you should be able to access it uh, from any machine. Localhost, okay, so it has redire redirected me to a HTTPS site, and that's the uh, welcome screen you get when you install Rancher. It's going to ask you for the uh, uh, default, uh, the password for the default uh, user, admin. I'm going to uncheck that one. I'm going to set up a password. Okay, continue. And uh, the IP address, the host name. Uh, make sure uh, your nodes in the Kubernetes cluster can reach this host machine. 
if you've got DNS, um, I haven't I haven't got DNS in my setup, so I'm gonna um, enter the IP address of the machine which is running Rancher. So in your case, whichever machine is running Rancher, um, you input the host name here or the IP address depending on whether you've got DNS configured in your environment. So I'm gonna check what IP I've got for my local machine. So it's this one here. I'm gonna copy that and I'm gonna paste it here. Ignore the warning, save URL. Cool, so that's a clean uh, Rancher web UI and uh, we're gonna add um, uh, our cluster. So when you add a cluster, what it's gonna do, what Rancher is gonna do is it's going to give you a command which you need to run on uh, your cluster. So once you run that, it's gonna create a new namespace called cattle system and all the rancher uh, related resources are going to get deployed in that namespace. Add cluster, you can add a, a Google, Amazon or Microsoft Azure. In my case, I'm gonna import the existing cluster, so click import. And you can add a cluster name. My K8S cluster, if you want, you can add a description. My local Kubernetes cluster and click create okay so this is the command you need to run on your um, Kubernetes cluster let's copy that and it says um, if you run this command if you get a certificate error uh, you need to uh, use this command instead so let's try what this command does and what error it throws Okay, so as they mentioned, it says unable to connect to the server, some certificate error. Let's copy the other command. So what it basically does is it uses the insecure option to download the YAML file and then apply uh, it to the uh, Kubernetes cluster. So basically it's a two part. The first part is downloading the YAML file and the second part is the uh, applying it to the um, cluster. So I'll delete the kubectl apply and just wanted to look at what the YAML file is. Okay, so the first section it says it's gonna uh, deploy a namespace resource called cattle system, which I told. And um, it's gonna deploy a service account, cluster role binding, um, a secret, cluster role a deployment, and a daemon set finally. So everything is gonna get deployed inside uh, the cattle system namespace. Okay, and um, I don't want that log anymore. If I do watch kubectl get namespaces, you will see uh, the namespace cattle system getting created. Okay, let's run the command. Okay, so it has created the namespace, service account, uh, cluster role binding, secret deployment, and daemon set. And uh, you can see the namespace that got created. So if I look at the namespace, watch kubectl minus n cattle system get all, you can see um, it created a pod, it created a deployment set, um, replica set, daemon set, and everything and it's pulling the containers at the moment. Uh, daemon set, so you can see these two parts are node agents, so that's how Rancher interacts with uh, your Kubernetes cluster. So it's gonna deploy, um, I've recently done a video on daemon set, which is uh, to deploy a pod on every single node. So um, as I've got two nodes here, uh, it has deployed two uh, pods. So a node agent will be running on each node in your cluster. So that's how it communicates with Rancher, uh, the interaction between uh, Rancher and Kubernetes. Okay, let's wait for the uh, the last part to get created. So once it gets created, um, we should be able to see the cluster uh, in our uh, Rancher dashboard. Okay, so all of them are running now. I'm gonna close that one and go to the Rancher 
web UI. So it says it's active and if I click my K8 is cluster, it says how many CPU I've got for the entire cluster, what's the memory capacity and how many pods um, I can use. By default it's 110 pods per node, so you can deploy up to 330 pods. So we haven't deployed any pods yet. All these 15 pods are for the Kubernetes and the Rancher pods. So what version of Kubernetes we are running, um, what's the type of provider, whether it's Amazon, Microsoft, or Google. In our case, it's um, an existing cluster which we imported, uh, number of nodes, uh, when it created, and so on. And it gives you the status of the, uh, the components. Um, are the nodes healthy? Is the uh, scheduler component healthy? Controller manager? HCD, which is the uh, the data store where Kubernetes stores all the uh, all its configurations and runtime uh, information. Right. Navigation. So once you're in your cluster, you can look at your nodes. I've got all these nodes and what the roles these nodes play. If I click uh, one of the worker nodes, um, you can see there's a disk space warning and uh, the individual metrics, uh, what kernel version, what version of Docker we are running on this node, uh, Kubelet version, what operating system we are running, and all those details. Um, you can see what namespaces we have got, the default one, Kube public, Kube system, and the cattle system, which was deployed by uh, Rancher. Members, tools, and if you want to import multiple clusters, um, you can do that and all your clusters will be listed under here. So at the moment I've got only one cluster and if you go to global you can add um, multiple clusters here basically. So if I go in here and select um, K8 as cluster and click cluster you will see all these details. Okay so users will be able to run kubectl um, from within the Rancher web UI so if I click launch kubectl, it's going to give me a, a, a small shell where I can run kubectl version, kubectl get nodes and all, all those things. Or what you can do is uh, it will also give you the kubeconfig file. Basically you need to copy this file and then paste it in your uh, config file under your dot cube directory okay um, what you can also do is um, which I'm not going to show in this video uh, but um, you got to do that is um, security so authentication you can set up any of these authentication, Active Directory authentication, you've got LDAP authentication, you've got GitHub authentication. So if you enable authentication, you can fine grain the access control um, to your Kubernetes cluster or all the clusters you've got. So I'm not going to set up any authentication now because I haven't got any Active Directory or LDAP uh, in my environment. Okay, going back to clusters, I'm going to show you a quick demo of how to deploy um, an Nginx um, web application. So if I go in here and if I select uh, the default namespace, you can either import YAML if you have already got your YAML files. You can import the YAML here. Um, you can select the namespace where you want to deploy your resources. Um, you can select the file and you can import it or you can create it from the web UI which I'm going to do now. So click deploy and back in the terminal I'm going to watch what it's going to do in my cluster. Watch kubectl get all minus o wide. Okay so at the moment it's clean uh, the default namespace doesn't have any resources apart from the default um, Kubernetes service. Okay so back in the Rancher UI um, my nginx I'm going to give it a name my nginx you can add a description if you want nginx demo in rancher right so this is uh, you're trying to deploy a deployment type of resource say 
if you want to deploy a daemon set if you want to deploy a job or a cron job or anything else click more options so run one part on each node um, that's basically a daemon set um, which you know uh, a daemon set is a one that uh, schedules part on each of the nodes you've got you can deploy a stateful set um, I haven't covered a video about stateful sets in Kubernetes which um, I'm planning to do in my future video you can create a cron job you can create a job I've already done videos on uh, job and cron jobs so for this demo I'm gonna create a deployment set uh, you can select uh, the number of replicas number of instances of the nginx pod you want running um, I'm gonna leave it as one because I'm gonna come back and uh, show you how you can scale your deployment how you can increase your um, uh, replicas count okay and the docker image I'm gonna use is nginx uh, I'm gonna deploy that to the default namespace I'm just going to deploy this uh, resource deployment I'm not gonna expose it um, you won't be able to access the web application without exposing the uh, uh, port and creating a service um, we usually do using kubectl expose deployment command and um, uh, for this time um, I'm going to leave that blank I'm gonna come back again and uh, do that okay you can uh, add environment variables if you want node scheduling if you want to deploy this to a specific class of nodes you can do that uh, if you want to mount any volumes you can do that uh, I'm not going to do any of those now it's just a, um, a simple nginx deployment I'm gonna click launch now okay so that's updating if you click the little arrow here and you see here it's unavailable and uh, one I think it's uh, creating the pod at the moment if you click on that one you can see the deployments events it has created a scaling replica set and there you go the nginx pod is uh, running and if I click here you can see the nginx pod if you click here you should be able to get a shell into the container so that's my nginx pod container if I close it and you can also see the logs of the uh, container so at the moment there are no logs but you can view logs from the uh, from your dashboard and I'm gonna go back and go back again so now you see the little green circle here um, if you want to scale your replica you just click the plus sign and it's gonna deploy the second one and uh, if you can see here it's uh, creating the second one at the moment and back in the terminal you can see the container is getting created for the uh, for the second part on the uh, on the other node so that's our deployment set replica set and the pods for um, the nginx deployment so these both uh, pods are running now and you can see here uh, two running and you've got uh, the two pods you can click the deployment the option here the little uh, three dots icon you can edit your deployment uh, you can um, execute a shell you can delete the deployment here and um, what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to create a, a service for this application so that you can access uh, the web application for that what I'm gonna do is click this option icon and click edit and in here I'm gonna add a port mapping so port 80 so that's the container port nginx is running inside the container I'm going to select the node port which means um, once you enable this it's going to be available on all the nodes you can access the application by connecting to any node it's going to assign a random port uh, but for uh, ease of use I'm going to specify the port I want to listen 32323 for example and click upgrade so it's doing the upgrade at the moment and if you look in the terminal um, node port service so that's the um, service it created and it's listening on port 32323 on all the nodes okay so let's wait okay it's all done and if I go to um, any node I've got two nodes and I've already got them added to my etc hosts file on my host machine K worker and K worker 2 
if I go to K worker one colon three two three two three so that's your nginx welcome page you can also access this from your other node k worker 2 welcome to nginx so that's the nginx welcome page cool so that's working i closed rancher localhost um it's all running fine and um if I go to the default namespace, you've got the workloads here and service discovery. So that's the service we uh, created. And if you've got any volumes, you can see the volume here. Um, I'll do a video on how to um, add a persistent volume and how you can access it using persistent volume claims and so on. Okay. And... Um, if you want to clean up, if you go to workspace and click here, delete it. Um, the other thing I wanted to show you is you can also view the YAML file for this deployment. Um, view or edit YAML file. So that's the uh, YAML file. If you were to create uh, this deployment using the kubectl command with a YAML file, you would have um, created this YAML file and done kubectl create minus f on the file name. So we did that through the web UI. Okay, so if I click that one and click delete, asking for confirmation, so that's gone. And back in the terminal, um, it's cleaning up the parts. Um, yeah, that's it. Um, you can uh, do, you can manage your cluster this way using Rancher. It makes your life a lot easier um, especially when you're in a corporate environment where you've got multiple teams using your kubernetes cluster you can use rancher to give them access and uh, define policies uh, cluster policies you can define centralized authentication and um, it's gonna work very well um, I think that's it um, for this video and I haven't got anything planned um, uh, for this video. So um, I would suggest you to try using Rancher um, but before that make sure you've got a good idea um, of the uh, kubectl command. Make sure you've got the fundamentals right and you can move to uh, using Rancher. Um, I hope this video helped you and um, if you've got any problems or if you're following this video and something is not working right um, just um, drop me a comment I should be able to help you. Um, if you've got any uh, questions, just as I mentioned, drop me a comment. And if you like the video, share it with your friends. And uh, if you haven't already subscribed to my channel, please subscribe. And I've got more um, Kubernetes-related videos um, coming. And I've planned um, lots of interesting videos um, for Kubernetes. And um, um, yeah. Thank you so much for your time watching this video today and I will see you all in my next video. Bye-bye.